Hello there, Grade 7 learners! This new normal education setup has been a challenging one. This past academic year tested not only the students' learning, but the teachers as well. And I can't wait to witness how amazing you will be. So what are you waiting for? Let us go! Welcome to our English class, where there will be a lot of learning, enjoyment, and separate challenges along the way. But you don't have to worry because I'll be here for you. This is Sir Joseph and I gotcha! Have you ever seen or experienced a unique culture, heritage, landmarks, or even customs and wonder where they belong? Just like these pictures. What country do you think these concepts belong to? I want you to analyze the pictures and write your answers on your notebook. I'll give you 5 seconds to figure it out. What's your answer now, class? Are you familiar with these pictures presented to you? Or you just plainly guessed? Well, time to reveal the answer. Who among you got it right? Well then, congratulations! You did great, and for that, you have earned a gem. Here is another example. Take a look at these pictures, and just like earlier, I want you to analyze and figure out which country they belong to. Again, I will give you 5 seconds to finalize your answers. Time is up, class! Time to reveal the answer! Sending another gem for those who got it right. You all did great! Well done, class! How did you come up with your answers? What are your standards in differentiating the two countries just by analyzing their pictures? Do you have any idea on what our lesson will be for today? You are right! It is all about local color. Today, we will define local color by discovering literature as a tool to assert one's unique identity and to better understand other people. At the end of this episode, here are your key takeaways. Identify social and cultural factors that help shape our identities as Filipinos. Be able to recognize local color used in the selection, We Filipinos are mild drinkers by Alejandro R. Roses. Appraise how the selection serves as an avenue in asserting Filipino identity. Also, you will be receiving gems for every correct answer. So participate in our discussion and keep on collecting them. Are you ready? Well then, kindly bring out your self-learning mojo, your pen, and your notebook. But first off, what is local color? Local color is the style of writing derived from the presentation of the features and peculiarities of a particular locality and its inhabitants. In addition, it focuses on the characters, dialect, customs, topography, and the other features specific to a region. For you to be able to understand the concept of local color, let us first read and analyze the story entitled, We Filipinos Are Mild Drinkers, 
by Alejandro R. Rosas. Are you ready to listen, class? Well then, prepare your ears and listen carefully. We Filipinos are mild drinkers. We drink for only three good reasons. We drink when we are very happy, we drink when we are very sad, and we drink for any other reason. When the Americans recaptured the Philippines, they built an airbase a few miles from our barrio. Yankee soldiers became a very common sight. I met a lot of GIs and made many friends. I could not pronounce their names. I could not tell them apart. All Americans looked alike to me. They all looked white. One afternoon, I was plowing our rice field with our carabao named Datu. I was barefooted and stripped to the waist. My pants that were made from abaca fibers and woven on homemade looms were rolled up to my knees. My bolo was at my side. An American soldier was walking on the highway. When he saw me, he headed towards me. I stopped plowing and waited for him. I noticed he was carrying a half-pint bottle of whiskey. Whiskey bottles seemed to be a part of American uniform. Hello, my little brown brother, he said, patting me on the head. Hello, Joe, I answered. All Americans are called Joe in the Philippines. Any bars in this town? He asked. That was usually the first question American soldiers ask when they visited our barrio. I am sorry, Joe, I replied. There are no bars in this barrio. Oh, hell. You know where I could buy more whiskey? No, Joe, I am sorry. We do not drink whiskey. Here, have a swig. You have been working too hard, he said, offering me his half-filled bottle. No, thank you, Joe, I said. We Filipinos are mild drinkers. Well, don't you drink at all? Yes, Joe, I drink, but not whiskey. What the hell do you drink? I drink lambano. Jungle juice, eh? I guess that is what the GIs call it. You know where I could buy some? I have some you can have, but I do not think you will like it. I like it alright. Don't worry about that. I have drunk everything. Whiskey, rum, brandy, tequila, gin, champagne, sake, vodka. He mentioned many more that I cannot spell. Say, you sure drink a lot, don't you? I not only drink a lot, but I drink anything. I drank Chanel number no. 5 when I was in France. In New Guinea, I got soused on William's shaving lotion. When I was laid up in the hospital, I got pie-eyed with medical alcohol. On my way here in the transport, I got stoned on torpedo juice. You ain't kidding when you say I drink a lot. So let's have some of that jungle juice, eh? All right, I said. I will just take this carabao to the mud hole, then we can go home and drink. You sure love that animal, don't you? I should, I replied. It does half of my work. Why don't you get two of them? I did not answer. I unhitched Datu from the plow and led him to the mud hole. Joe was following me. Datu lay in the mud and was going whoosh, whoosh. Flies and other insects flew from his back and hovered in the air. A strange warm odor rose out of the muddle. A carabao does not have any sweat glands except on its nose. It has to wallow in the mud or bathe in a river about every three hours. Otherwise, it runs amok. Datu shook his head and his widespread horns scooped the muddy water on his back. He rolled over and was soon covered with slimy mud. An expression of perfect contentment came into his eyes. Then he swished his tail and Joe and I had to move back 
from the mud hole to keep from getting splashed. I left Datu in the mud hole. Then, turning to Joe, I said, let us go. And we proceeded towards my house. Joe was curiously looking around. This place is full of coconut trees, he said. Don't you have any coconut trees in America? I asked. No, he replied. Back home, we have the pine tree. What is it like? Oh, it is tall and stately. It goes straight up to the sky like a skyscraper. It symbolizes America. Well, I said, the coconut tree symbolizes the Philippines. It starts up to the sky, but then its leaves sway down to earth as if remembering the land that gave it birth. It does not forget the soil that gave it life. In a short while, we arrived in my Nipa house. I took a bamboo ladder and leaned it against a tree. Then I climbed the ladder and picked some calamansi. What's that? Joe asked. Philippine lemon, I answered. We will need this for our drinks. Oh, chasers. That is right, Joe. That is what the soldiers call it. I filled my pockets and then went down. I went to the garden well and washed the mud from my legs. Then we went up a bamboo ladder to my hut. It was getting dark, so I filled a coconut shell with coconut oil, dipped a wick in the oil, and lighted the wick. It produced a flickering light. I unstrapped my bolo and hung it on the wall. Please sit down, Joe, I said. Where? He asked, looking around. Right there, I said, pointing to the floor. Joe sat down on the floor. I sliced the calamansi in halves, took some rough salt, and laid it on the foot-high table. I went to the kitchen and took the, the bamboo tube where I kept my lambanog. Lambanog is a drink extracted from the coconut tree with pulverized mangrove bark thrown in to prevent spontaneous combustion. It has many uses. We use it as a remedy for snake bites, as counteractive for malaria chills, as an insecticide, and for tanning carabao hide. I poured some lambanog on two polished coconut shells and gave one of the shells to Joe. I diluted my drink with some of Joe's whiskey. It became milky. We were both seated on the floor. I poured some of my drink on the bamboo floor and it went through the slits to the ground below. Hey, what are you doing? said Joe. Throwing good liquor away? No, Joe, I said. It is the custom here always to give back to the earth a little of what we have taken from the earth. Well, he said, raising his shell. Here's to the end of the war. Here's to the end of the war, I said, also lifting my drink. I gulped my drink down. I followed it with a slice of calamansi dipped in rough salt. Joe took his drink, but reacted in a peculiar way. His eyes popped out like a frog's, and his hand clutched his throat. He looked as if he had swallowed a centipede. Quick! A chaser, he said. I gave him a slice of calamansi dipped in unrefined salt. He squirted it in his mouth, but it was too late. Nothing could chase her. The calamansi did not help him. I don't think even a coconut would have helped him. What is wrong, Joe? I asked. Nothing, he said. The first drink always affects me this way. He was panting hard and tears were rolling down his cheeks. Well, the first drink always acts like a minesweeper, I said, but this second one will be smooth. I filled his shell for the second time. Again, I diluted my drink with Joe's whiskey. I gave Joe his shell. 
I noticed he was beaded with perspiration. He had unbuttoned his collar and loosened his tie. Joe took his shell but did not seem very anxious. I lifted my shell and said, Here is to America. I was trying very hard to be a good host. Here is to America, Joe said. We both killed our drinks. Joe again reacted in a funny way. His neck stretched out like a turtle's, and now he was panting like a carabao gone amok. He was grasping his thigh with one hand, then he looked down on his thigh, threw it to one side, and said, Oh Christ, for a while I thought it was my tongue. After this, he started to tinker with his teeth. What's wrong, Joe? I asked still trying to be a perfect host. Plenty. This damned stuff had loosened my bridge work. As Joe exhaled, a moth flying around a flickering flame fell dead. He stared at the dead moth and said, and they talk of DDT. Well, how about another drink? I ask. It is what we came here for. No thanks, he said. I'm through. Surely you will not refuse my hospitality? Okay, just once more. I poured the juice in the shells and again diluted mine with the whiskey. I handed Joe his drink. Here's to the Philippines, he said. Here's to the Philippines, I said. Joe took some of his drink. I could not see very clearly in the flickering light, but I could have sworn I saw smoke out of his tears. This stuff must be radioactive, he said. He threw the remains of his drink on the Nipa wall and yielded. Blaze, god damn you, Blaze. Just as I was getting in the mood to drink, Joe passed out. He lay on the floor, flat as a starfish. He was in a class all by himself. I knew that the soldiers had to be back in their barracks at a certain time, so I decided to take Joe back. I tried to lift him. It was like lifting a carabao. I had to call four of my neighbors to help me carry Joe. We slung him on top of my carabao. I took my bolo from my house and strapped it on my waist. Then I proceeded to take him back. The whole barrio was wondering what had happened to the big Americano. After two hours, I arrived at the airfield. I found out which barrack he belonged to and took him there. His friends helped me take him to his cot. They were glad to see him back. Everybody thanked me for taking him home. As I was leaving the barracks to go home, one of his buddies called me and said, Hey you, how about a can of beer before you go? No thanks, I said. We Filipinos are mild drinkers. Great! Now that we have finally read the story, let us talk about the Philippine local color incorporated in the selection. Do you have any idea on how local color is used in the story? Awesome! Now, let us break this down! The first example of local color in the selection is the usage of the non-English words calamansi and lambanog. Both calamansi and lambanog are specific fruit and liquor indigenous to the Philippines. That is why they do not have any English counterparts. The second example is the detailed description of clothes, which is the abaca fiber pants. This type of clothing is unique to the Philippines because it is the usual attire of Filipino farmers. The Nipa House or the Bahay Kubo is another example of Philippine local color 
as it describes the way of living of the Filipinos, as well as the Filipino tradition or custom of giving back to nature is an example of Philippine local color. All right, now that we have finally discussed and provided examples about local color, then I am sure that you are all ready to answer our learning tasks. So, come on! Are you ready now, class? Well then, if that's the case, then kindly bring out your notebook and your pen and it's time for our English Sepher Challenge! Now, I want you to read and analyze the statements and then choose the letter of the correct answer. Write your answers on your notebook. Number 1. What are the two non-English words used in the text? Letter A. Buro and Kamyas. Letter B. Buro and Lambanog. Letter C. Kalamansi and Buro or letter D Kalamansi and Lambanog You are right it is letter D Kalamansi and Lambanog because it was mentioned in the selection that the author referred to them as Philippine lemon and jungle juice Number 2. What type of clothing does the Filipino use in the selection? Letter A. Suit and tie. Letter B. Abaca fibered pants. Letter C. Blazers. Or letter D. White long sleeves. You are correct. It is letter B, abaca fibered pants, because it is the usual attire of Filipino farmers. Number 3. Where did the Filipino and the American had their drinks? Letter A, Bahay Kubo or Nipa House. Letter B, in the farm. Letter C, the barracks, or letter D, in a gazebo. You are correct. It is letter A, Bahay Kubo, or Nipa House, since it is the traditional house indigenous to the Philippines. Number 4. What kind of Philippine local color was shown in the story where the Filipino poured some of his drink to the ground below? Letter A. Topography Letter B. Dialect Letter C. Clothing Or letter D. Customs You are correct. It is letter D, customs, since it is a Filipino custom to always give back to nature what we have taken from it. Number 5. What tree symbolizes the Philippines according to the text? Letter A, pine tree. Letter B, mangrove tree. Letter C, coconut tree or letter D, cherry blossom tree. Very good! It is letter C, coconut tree. The most common or usual type of tree that you will witness in every part of the Philippines. Great! Good job! Congratulations for participating in our first Sepher Challenge. And for that, you have earned another gem. Are you ready for more? 
Well then, get ready as I'll give you the Super Duper Challenge! Read the statements carefully, then provide the correct answer for each number. Write your answers on your notebook. Number 1. It is the style of writing derived from the presentation of the features and peculiarities of a particular locality and its inhabitants. It describes the dialect, customs, topography, or any other characteristics that are unique to a certain place or region. You are correct! It is local color! Number 2. Who is the author of the story We Filipinos Are Mild Drinkers? You got it right again! It is... Mr. Alejandro R. Roses. Number 3. What is the name of the Carabao according to the selection? Fantastic job! Its name is Datu. Number 4. What are the two races presented in the story? Excellent! They are Filipinos and Americans. Number 5. It is a drink extracted from the coconut tree with pulverized mangrove bark thrown in to prevent spontaneous combustion. A wonderful job! It is Lambanog. Fantastic job, class! For completing the separate Joker challenge, here is your last jam. Thank you and a job well done for participating in our separate challenges for today. You all did great! Coming right up is your assignment. Don't forget about our discussions a while ago, okay? Please prepare to take a photo or a screenshot of this task, or kindly refer to your self-learning mojo and turn it to page 42. Accomplish your assignment before our next episode. Write your answers on your notebook. Let's see if you will collect more gems next time. On our next episode, we will further discuss local color as well as the use of discovering literature as a tool to assert one's unique identity and to better understand other people. This has been Sir Joseph, your guide in exploring English. See you again next time! Bye!